I'm Monica Garza, Special Projects Coordinator here at the USHGC. We're really excited to bring to you this awesome uh, training webinar here with Meta, our partners, on engaging your audience creatively with Instagram. As we all know, Instagram is a very popular social network that a lot of small business owners have jumped in on. And we have Darlene Helena here, who is gonna be presenting this for you guys. Really excited. Feel free to utilize the chat box, get engaged, chat with us, ask us questions, and we'll have a brief Q&A at the end. As a reminder, this is being recorded and live on Facebook as well. So you can always come back and watch it again, but we encourage you to stay throughout the streaming with us. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Darlene. Thank you so much, Monica. Hey, and you know what? Thank you so much for being here. Everyone who's in the chat right now that introduced themselves, I love the energy that everybody came in with. We're ready to roll. Um, today, as Monica mentioned, we're actually going to talk about engaging your audience creatively on Instagram. And so what does that actually mean, right? I think a lot of times we hear all these, you know, this Instagram strategy and that Instagram strategy, and it all feels very overwhelming. We don't really know which things are worth our time for our particular business. We don't know which things are going to adapt well with our lifestyle and how we like to run our social media and be presented. Um, you know, from a branding perspective. So this is a really good opportunity for us to one, take stock of everything that's available to us in terms of tools, services, support. Two, go into how we plan and organize all of this wonderful advice that we hear left and right all the time. And three, put into actionable steps that we can implement as soon as you go home today. So first things first, my name is Darlene Helena. I'm part of the small business team with Meta. I'm actually a small business owner. And so it's an honor for me to be able to connect and collaborate with Meta to be able to bring these kinds of trainings to my fellow entrepreneurs, because I know that if my business weren't a literal marketing business, I would probably have a lot of these questions. So this is a great opportunity for us to exchange some expertise. One quick reminder is that I know this is still a little confusing, but I think we're all getting it now. The Facebook company is now Meta. So Facebook has become Meta, the company, and that's because we're focusing on building for the future of human connection. The metaverse is going to unlock the next generation of social connection. And in case you're not familiar with that, the metaverse is really just a set of connected digital spaces that let you do things that you can't do in the physical world with people that you can't be with in the physical version of the internet gets here, it's going to help integrate our daily lives much more seamlessly. And when this vision fully comes to life in, let's say about 10 years, you're going to be able to do things in the real world that you couldn't even fathom right now that you normally couldn't do with people that are miles and countries away. It's going to create a new way for us to get closer to our customers and to other people who might be interested in our business. But of course, all of this is going to start with what we do today with our social presences on social media. So let's get into the agenda. The first step we're going to tackle is I'm going to show you how to create a social media plan. Because I know there's a lot of advice and a lot of guidance, but you as an individual business with unique needs need your own plan. We're going to talk about the different formats that are available to you on Instagram, different styles of content that you can create. Then we'll get into improve, improving your content over time. What use is it for us to learn how to effectively communicate on Instagram today if we're not equipping ourselves with the skills to get better every day and be ready a year from now when sometimes the culture changes on the app and so on and so forth. So let's get into the most important component of engaging with your audience on Instagram. And that's really to have a very clear plan. We need marketing goals to guide our social media strategy. I think a lot of times we think the goal is to get X amount of followers or to get X amount of engagement, but I want you to really think about it. What do you want to accomplish with your posts and who do you want to reach? Having a plan is going to help you not only stay true to that mission and not get distracted by vanity metrics like likes and views, but it's also going to help you stand out because you're going to seem so on top of it and so professional to all of your clients. Let's talk about goal setting from a marketing perspective. And I know that a lot of you are probably going to already know where I'm going with this. We're going to look at an example of our friend Adrian, who runs a Mediterranean restaurant called Little Lemon. So Adrian's restaurant is already getting some online orders. They just launched an online ordering system. But his new goal is to get an average of 50 online orders per day in the next three months. 
It sounds pretty simple, but this is almost a perfect example of what your marketing goals should look like when you're on social media. And that's because it hits a few key metrics that I know you're probably familiar with. This is a specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely goal. And let's break that down from a social media perspective. For one, Adrian knows exactly what he wants to accomplish with his social media presence. And this particular accomplishment is tied to a business goal. So notice how that goal didn't say, my goal is to get 10,000 new followers so that maybe they'll order from me online. The goal is to get orders per day in the next three months. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, Adrian just launched the online ordering system, as I just mentioned. So when we have launches or exciting SKUs in our store that are getting a lot of traction, hey, sometimes we might want to shape our marketing goals around that or whatever major overarching business goals we have for ourselves. This goal is also measurable because if we're not hitting the 50 orders per day, we know that we're doing less or more. It's achievable because Adrian's already getting 15 orders a day. So in three months to work your way from 15 to 50, that's something that we can do. It's also relevant because this is a brand new system in his business and he really wants this project to work. And of course it's timely. We have to attach a timeline to what we want to accomplish on social media, or when we may get caught in the limbo of wondering what we're doing wrong and maybe not focusing on the right analytics that are really going to make a difference for us. An example, another example of what that might look like would be that maybe you want to have 50 people sign up for your email list coming from Instagram. And so this informs your Instagram content because if you know that the ultimate goal is to get people to sign up for that newsletter or to get them to order online from your restaurant, then you can shape the way that you talk on social media to steer people in that direction without being too upfront or too salesy or feeling uncomfortable like you're asking for something too much of a hard ask. And speaking of how you talk and communicate on social media, here's the other component to planning our social media platform presence. We need to have an established look and voice. And what this means is people should be able to look at your business's brand and know that it's your business, whether they're looking at your Instagram or your your Facebook, they will just see a cohesive look and voice. Take a look at the screen. You notice Lulu, uh, Little Lemon's profile. All of the photos you can see on that grid carry a similar vibe, a similar tone with the colors that they have. It's got similar, uh, what's it called, positioning. All of these photos, you can tell, are cohesive and they look like they belong to the same group. Another thing that I would like to point out that maybe you can't see in the slide, but it's something that we know, Adrian uses the same profile picture on Instagram that he uses on his business Facebook. And this is because sometimes we have different versions of our logos, but having the same version of your branding on both platforms makes it easier for people to recognize you. One of the most important things to know about social media presences is that usually people follow you on the third, fourth, fifth touch that they've had with you. So they've seen a post of yours before, usually before they follow. And so this is where that um, memorable branding really comes into place. Now, one caveat when it comes to branding is you want to make sure that it's truly and genuinely authentic to you. So you want to make sure that you're picking a tone of voice for your business that matches who you are as a business and an owner. That means if you're more on the casual, funny side, then you know you might want to take on a more casual, funny tone in your content. If you um, are more buttoned up and a little bit more professional, maybe you're a lawyer and that's just the branding that you want for yourself, inject that into how you communicate on social media. Just don't remember, I'm sorry, don't forget to remember that your business has a personality. Just like you have a unique personality, every business has a personality and that is your brand. So let's say that you've already established what your tone of voice is going to be like, what you're going to talk about. You know what your goal is on social media. What about planning the actual content? This is where your posting schedule is going to be your very, very best friend. On the slide, you'll notice that there are several columns for this posting schedule. A few of them you probably already kind of get the gist of just by looking at it. We've got the posting date when we're going to post something. We've got the format, which 
tells us if this is going to be a reel, is this going to be an Instagram story, is this going to be a photo, what is the format we're going to use. And then we've got a few notes on what visuals we're going to include, so what photos and videos we want to include in it. One quick hack that I like to use is to upload all of my photos that I'm going to put on Instagram into like a Google Drive folder and then link them in this document. So that as I'm going through my posting schedule, I can hover over the link, tap on it and preview what image goes with that post. I want you to pay attention to the column before the format, though. Look at the theme column. You'll notice that you see promotion behind the scenes and new menu item. These are all what I like to call content um, verticals. So these are different categories of content, content pillars that you use to guide your content. And here's why these are so important. Have you ever looked at someone's profile on Instagram and realized that they really just post a lot of the same thing? It's the same exact kind of content just over and over and over again. And that's actually not necessarily a bad thing. What you really want to watch out for is the meat of your content. What is the topic of it? Visually, your content probably should look really similar to each other, but it's the what goes in our content that we should pay attention to. That means we don't want to do 100% promotion in our content. We don't want to do 100% just information content. We want to find the categories of content that are going to serve that marketing goal that we talked about two slides ago and implement them in our strategy. For example, if Lulu, uh, if Little Lemon is always putting out new menu items, then one of their content categories will always be like, what's fresh on our plate? What's new? What are we serving in the restaurant? Another vertical will be a behind the scenes because this helps the audience feel like they, they get to step into the kitchen and really see how that meal is prepared, how many steps there are to it, just how um, intricate the sauce that they're going to be served is going to be. And then, of course, we've got our content that's promotional because we can't forget to ask people to support our business. I think oftentimes we feel a little bit weird making an ask on social media, but when you have a healthy mix of themes or content pillars in your strategy, you never have to worry about feeling like you're promoting yourself too much because you're offering enough value to the community and diversifying your content enough that you're going to have success if you are able to make that call to action for your audience. So that's how we plan our content, the pre-posting part. What happens when we're actually putting our content out there and going live with it on Instagram? It's important to understand first what people really use Instagram for. One of the best things about Instagram is that it's such a visually expressive platform. So visuals are always going to be the main character, videos and photos, particularly videos. At the end of the day, people use Instagram to explore their interests and hobbies and to discover new ones. They also use it to connect with their friends and their family. But at the end of the day, they also use Instagram to discover new businesses like yours. When you take advantage of Instagram and you really use it to share your unique story to connect with the audience, not only are you putting yourself in front of the audience in the first place, but you're really standing out against your competition. Because as we mentioned a moment ago, planning content is a little bit more than just figuring out what we're posting today. It's also figuring out what kind of content we want to post and how often. So by leveraging your business's story and really becoming a master storyteller on social media, you can stand out against your competitors. Let's talk about one of the primary formats of content on Instagram. Feed posts are what you probably see most often on Instagram. These are sometimes static photos, like the one you see on screen. Oftentimes they are carousels of photos where you can slide through different photos to see everything that's in that post. It's important to build an association or a mental relationship between each of these post formats and our business. So I'm going to help you do that as we go through them. When you think of your feed posts, this is the content that people see when they first land on your Instagram profile. If they ever tap in just to look at your profile, these are the posts that they will see. However, I want you to think of this feed content as your digital storefront. If you had a physical location at the mall for your business and you had these big, clear glass windows at the front, what would you put in those displays to catch people's eye and get them to walk into your store? Assuming that there's foot traffic at the mall, you could put 
so many things, uh, virtually anything at those windows, but what would you want to be the forefront of your business? This is what your feed content is for. This is more permanent content that's usually always on our profile unless we personally archive them. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Instagram stories. Instagram stories only last 24 hours, which means you upload it today, tomorrow at the same time, it's expired. And now you're probably thinking, now that we're adding yet another format into the mix, well, if I can post photos on both my feed and in my stories, what should I be posting on either? What kinds of photos go on my feed and what kinds of photos go on my stories? Think of it from a community engagement position. So if your feed posts are your digital storefront, they're that store at the mall that people walk by and traffic flows into, then your stories are the individual that walks the mall with a stack of pamphlets, handing them to folks to get them to come into the store. Our stories are, number one, a great way for us to hear, to put our ear to the streets and see what our ideal consumer is saying. For example, well, Adrian, as you can see on screen, used a sticker to let people vote on whether or not they want to see a behind the scenes on how they make their cocktails in the restaurant. So when Adrian checks the analytics for this story, he's going to have data on what people want to see from him and his business. In addition to this, these stories are a great way for you to be introduced to new customers because they are massively shareable content. Because stories expire every 24 hours, the culture on Instagram is such that even when we see a small business that posted something we just want to support, it's very common for people to repost it on their story to share it with their network, essentially creating a wider spider web of networking for you as a business owner without you doing anything. All you did was upload the Instagram stories. So stories are useful for a multitude of reasons, but at the end of the day, their key function is to engage communities. The best thing about stories is that it's such an authentic space. This is typically where people do their behind the scenes content. This is where sometimes we'll chat with the camera directly. We'll pull out, pull out our phones and have a little conversation with our audience and build even stronger bonds with the people that have already had their eye on our business. So I know there's an elephant in the room. There's a new kid on the block that everybody's talking about and that's Reels. Personally, reels are my favorite posting format on Instagram for many reasons, but I'll start with the one that matters to you most. For years, we have been, you know, getting really into strategy to get more exposure for our businesses on Instagram, but reels skyrockets the exposure that we get without us doing any additional work. Here's the difference between reels and your feed posts versus your stories. Your feed posts and your stories are more of a closed network feature, meaning that the majority of the people that are going to see that content already saw you somewhere else, and then they went to your Instagram profile. Reels is an environment where the majority of the people being presented your content are people who maybe haven't seen you before or don't follow you. It's mostly people who are in the greater Instagram community, which makes it an extremely valuable networking tool. To give you an idea of just how valuable this is, I myself was kind of in a bit of a niche, kind of stuck in like a one little corner of the internet for a while on Instagram. And the way that I was actually able to break out of that and start attracting people that are more aligned with what I wanted to talk about in my business and in my account was through reels. I started posting reels that were specifically targeted toward the kind of person I wanted to find. And because the reels algorithm goes out and finds people that are most likely to like that content, I was able to bring in new eyes that are more aligned with what I wanted to share. And as a bonus, those people are going to interact with the kind of content I want to make way more than the people who wanted to interact with the content that I no longer want to make. So how do you leverage that as a business owner? Well, for one, this is a great way to get more exposure for your business. This is a fantastic way to get more attention to your business. Second, if you're not super technically, uh, technically savvy, but you are creative and you want to have fun with your social media, Reels has a ton of pre-built in features that do most of the editing for you. In fact, my favorite Reels feature for making content, and this is funny because this has actually been some of my most successful Reels were made this way. It takes 15 seconds. As you're browsing the Reels tab and you're watching other videos, 
you'll notice that some of them will have a little button above the username that says use template. When that use template button pops up, you tap on there, you select any number of photos or videos, preferably videos from your camera roll. And it auto generates a reel for you. This reel is going to be timed to the music. So the clips are going to change at the beat of the music. Everything is going to be pretty much in the same format that you saw when you first saw the original video, but it's all done for you. And so that means that Reels has a very low barrier of entry. Sometimes with things like feed posts, we think, uh, you know, maybe we need a little more photography skills, or maybe we need a little bit more photo editing experience. But with Reels, they happen so quickly, they're so short, and they're so informal that they're perfectly suited for anyone who wants to work on their tech savviness, if you will, for social media purposes. And anyone who's running a business that is feeling like, the time has come for them to really employ an Instagram strategy, but they don't really know where to start. Reels is an excellent place to get started. As a bonus, your Reels are also display, uh, displayed on your Instagram profile. They can be displayed just like a regular feed post, which helps you double the use of your content. Your Reels is on one side of Instagram, finding you new followers, and it's on another side of Instagram, nurturing the ones that you already have. Speaking of nurturing your audiences, some of you may not like this, and I understand because I'm a shy person as well, but going live on Instagram should not be overlooked. This is one of the most genuine ways that you can connect with your audience. And if you have a service-based business, I want you in particular to think about Instagram live for this reason and this reason primarily. When we're having a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, when I call into this call via video chat, or when you FaceTime your friends or your family, the communication feels different. There are nuances that are lost in type. There are nuances that are lost in just having a still photo. But with Instagram Live, you're essentially able to enter your customer's living room and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them in a casual, real-time environment. And here's the kicker. If you're nervous about tripping over your words, that's fine. This is a live video. People can't rewind and watch it again. So it allows you to almost get a little bit more comfortable if you can train yourself to see it from the perspective of FaceTiming someone. The other thing about Instagram Live is that it's an interactive tool. So not only can you add stickers to your Instagram Lives so that people can see uh, the question that you're addressing. If they jump into the live a little bit late and they don't know what you're talking about, you can add a sticker that has the question that was asked, or you can pin a comment at the bottom so people know you can leave them a little welcome message so that as they're coming into your live, they know what you're going to be chatting about and you can greet them. Here's my favorite thing about Instagram live. And I know I have a favorite thing about each of their, these features and formats. I love them all equally, but as a marketer, I very quickly identify the services and features that serve my clients best and that serve my business best. So here's what I love about Instagram live. When you're going live on Instagram, if you're a service-based business, you can tag your products on Instagram. So people can shop your live as you're speaking. This is an opportunity for you to get sales while people are still warm, while they're still thinking about your business and you're at the forefront of their mind, while they have you on the camera in person, live, or not in person, but live in real time to ask questions to. So this is an opportunity for you to get closer to your community and nurture those audience members that have been wanting to make a purchase for a long time. The theme you'll notice throughout these posts is that video content is really king right now. And that's because it's just simply way more engaging than a still image. Of course, we still love photos. Of course, we still want to share our carousels. But when you're communicating a complex idea or you want to communicate something very particularly, video is almost always a better way to go. With video, you can focus on not just making shorter videos for reels. You can also upload longer videos to your Instagram profile. These can be up to an hour long and you can post them on your feed. It's a great way for you to not only have these evergreen pieces of content that work forever and ever that educate your consumer on your industry and your product, but it's also a great way for your viewer to shop on their own time. Maybe they don't want to show up to your Instagram live because their kids have soccer at that time. And so that's a little bit more important for them today. 
but you can still make that video available on your profile and put an Instagram story up that says, hey, did you miss that live earlier? Don't worry about it. I recorded it because you can download your Instagram lives as soon as you're done going live. You download it and then it gives you the option to post it to your profile. So you get to keep a copy of the live that you did and you get to post it up for folks who didn't make your live to see it. The bonus is that they can still shop those shoppable tags. So you still have the effect of people being able to ask real-time questions like, wait, um, is the light colored fabric on this top a little bit see-through or is it double lined? Like these are things that people would normally only know if they walked into a store, but because you're live, they can ask you the question just as if you were a shop, uh, a shop assistant in real life. Now, let's say you've been making content for a while, or you've been employing the strategies we've just talked about for a bit. And now it's time for you to implement better strategies, get a little bit better. Maybe you want to polish the way that you're doing things because they're working, but you think, you, oh, kitty in the background, but you feel like they can do even better. Here's what I would suggest to improve your content over time. First, I'm going to give you a few best practices for each area of Instagram. But I think one of the key, uh, key success strategies that I can give you is to always have the mindset of focusing on improvement rather than focusing on doing creating content that is what other people are doing. We want to focus on creating content that improves on what we already like and already aligns with our business. So let's talk about our video content because that's going to be a lot of our content. A few best practices to make sure that your content is standing out is to number one, get everyone's attention early on and make sure that they know who they're dealing with. So get their attention in the first few seconds, but make sure your content is branded so they can build up that association. And if they ever see your brand around Instagram again, they know exactly who you are. They remember you, you're familiar. Also keep in mind that you don't have to make everything inside the Instagram app it is certainly easy because it's available to us and already on our phones, but there are tons of creative apps that you can use to make videos super easily. A few of my favorites are InShot and CapCut. I really enjoy those too. And they're pretty beginner friendly, even having tutorials and guides within the app themselves. I also want to mention that nowadays we want to make sure that our video is going to work well with sound on or off, regardless of whether our user is watching this video at home, where they can have the volume all the way up, or if they're watching it at the doctor's office, and maybe the volume all the way down, we want to make sure they can still catch our point. That means that if the main point of your video is in the audio track, you want to make sure you have captions on that screen or they use text on screen at least just for that main point. Let's talk about images. So I want to make sure we still remember that images are a great tool for us to evoke emotion in our audience and to communicate different personalities for our businesses. One of the main points to keep in mind with our photos is that we want to focus on one focal point. Take a look at this image on screen and tell me what you notice. If you look at the meal, of course, it's the main attraction, right? It looks delicious. But everything around that item in the photo actually helps this become the main attraction. We know that this is the focal point of the image, not just because it's the meal in the image, but because our eye is naturally drawn to this meal. Here's the reason. The food on the pan is a contrasting color from the pan. The pan is a lighter color, the food is a darker color. And then in the next layer, you got a more medium, darker colored themed table. We've also got the floor peeking in just a little bit, which was an artistic choice to add even more contrast. So look at that pattern. You've got dark, light, dark, light. We're creating patterns that help our eye flow. It almost creates a line because your eye wants to follow the pattern. Now, take a look at this detail. We got a couple slices of bread off to the side and we wouldn't, we certainly wouldn't want to overpower the main meal by making the bread the centerpiece of the image. And how we position that bread is what helps us focus on the image, even though we also have another piece of food on the table. It's off to the side a little bit. The piece that's closest to the very center of the photo is the actual meal itself. So we can tell that this is a garnish, an accessory, or something of the sort. One last tip on this, we often post photos like this one on Instagram and we tag our product for others to purchase, kind of like in the image you're seeing now. 
you can see that we've tagged products or businesses in this image. One key thing, uh, key thing to note is that you want to keep it to two maximum tops, like three tagged products in the image, because these little banners pop up. You see on screen how the little black banner pops up where we've tagged someone. So if this image had two more tags, that would probably be the maximum amount of tags we can have on screen without the photo looking a little bit messy when we tap to reveal the tags. So keep it to one to three tags when you're tagging shoppable items in the photo to keep everything cohesive and non-distracting. Photos, or I'm sorry, speaking of photos, photos can't, photos don't usually go out into the world on their own on Instagram. They're usually accompanied by a well thought out caption. And a lot of times this is either an afterthought for us because we're so busy as business owners, or it becomes the thing that we zero focus on and it stresses us out because we think of a million different ways we could say what we want to communicate. We just don't know which one is the right one. So here are four key points that you can keep in mind that are going to get you very far when you're in that position. Number one, keep it short and sweet. We want to be concise. Most of us don't read the longer captions on Instagram. We might read some here or there, but oftentimes only if the top section was a teaser. If you can tease people in a sentence or two, you can entice them into reading the rest of your text if you need to include that in your caption. But if you don't need to have a massive caption for a tangible reason, then it's always good to keep it concise. It's also important to treat this the way that we treat video. The first few seconds is really all we have to capture some attention. So put the most important part, the most eye-catching part of your caption first. Speaking of captions, and tagging. Of course, we want to tag people, locations, and products, but what about hashtags? This, of course, is one of the major questions for business owners. We're always wondering what hashtags are going to help me grow? How do hashtags work? What do hashtags even do? And so here's a brief summary of how hashtags work. Hashtags are not something that should prevent you from creating content online. Hashtags are me merely a tool that we can use to categorize our content. Think of it like a filing cabinet. Say that Instagram is a filing cabinet and your video is a specific, specific sheet of paper. Now, you probably made multiple copies of the sheet of paper because you're really proud of it. You want to show this document to everyone. Now, when you go to Instagram and you open Instagram, Instagram's file cabinet, you see hundreds of thousands of folders. And every folder has a label. On those labels, hashtag this, hashtag that, hashtag the next. Each hashtag on Instagram is kind of like a folder in Instagram's file cabinet. And now when you take your content and you put it in that folder inside of the cabinet, when you tag something with a hashtag, what you're telling Instagram is that when a user comes to the cabinet and says, hey, I want to see more golden retrievers on my timeline, then Instagram can open the file cabinet, pull out the folder that says, here are posts that talk about golden retrievers. Here you go. And hand it to the user who is looking for golden retrievers. So when it comes to hashtag, hashtags, what we really want to do is get specific. Take a look at these examples. Adrian owns a Mediterranean restaurant. We've been talking about his business all day long. It's called Little Lemon. Apparently they have very good food if y'all have noticed the photos. <laughs> Look at these hashtags. We're using hashtag Mediterranean restaurant, foodies of Instagram, seafood risotto, and dine Little Lemon. That last hashtag catches our eye. Hashtag dine Little Lemon is a hashtag that Adrian gives to everyone, customers, friends, and family, and uses in all of his own posts. So that when somebody searches for Little Lemon, they can not only see all the photos and videos that their customers have posted, but they can also tap into this hashtag and see all of the content the entire Little Lemon community has uploaded. Now, the other three hashtags, notice about them. Notice that they don't just describe the content. For example, hashtag foodies of Instagram describes a group of people who might be interested in this post. So you're really using your hashtags as folders, as a labeling system to help you get in touch with the right people. Don't think of hashtags as a tool that you use to reach massive millions, like tons of people, because at the end, that's not really what you want. Millions of people 
are not your target audience. There's a very specific group of people that would buy from you and you know who they are because you created your product or service for that type of person. So you need to find that specific kind of person. And that's why we get specific with our hashtags. Over time, you will master these strategies. You will get to a point where you are now fully in control and have a deep understanding of what you're doing on this platform. And it will come time for you to pivot, to try new ideas. And this is where the Instagram insights step into the picture. The Instagram insights are a little tab on your profile that once tapped, take you to all of the data on all of your content. This is going to show you your top performing posts, what kinds of people want to do business with you, what kinds of hashtags um, I'm sorry, what kinds of hashtags are working on specific ads or on specific organic posts? It's a great place for you to learn what's working and what's not and to do more of what is. Now, if you want some direction and you would like some steps that maybe you can implement today, visiting the professional dashboard at the top of your Instagram profile may be for you. At the professional dashboard, you're not just going to find all of the insights that we talked about a moment ago. You're also going to be able to run your ads from this uh, section of Instagram. You can also see your data at a bird's eye view. And one of my favorite things is that you actually have clear little direction, direct suggestions at the top of the screen, as you can see on the slide, that kind of help you figure out what your next step may be based on the data that you're already getting. So I know that we've covered a lot. We've talked about planning your content and how to start with a clear marketing objective, leading all the way to planning a content calendar, and then posting your content and improving that over time with insights and the professional dashboard. So for now, let's recap what we've already gone over. First, we want to keep a plan in mind. Remember, your marketing objective is your business objective. Think about the goals you have in your business and then work from there to create your social media goals. Use a diverse set of formats in your content. We don't want to just provide feed posts or just provide stories. We want to provide content that entertains our customer and that looks a little bit different every time while still feeling like us and our business. Because this is how we're going to keep things fresh and how we're going to attract our community over and over and over again. In addition to that, this is also how we're going to get people interested in us and to take us seriously because there's a lot of competitors. So the person who's going to catch the user's attention is probably going to be the person who is keeping in touch with what's changing in the culture on Instagram and switching it up when they need to. Speaking of switching it up, tracking your performance will tell you way more about what kind of content you should be posting than spying on your competitors. Looking at what, what's already working for you on your Instagram profile and then building on that is a great next step if you're already on the platform. And if you haven't started posting content on Instagram, creating content that you feel is authentic to your business's personality and then measuring the data is a great way to come closer to your ideal Instagram marketing strategy. And I want to remind you, the training definitely does not end here because, hey, we live in a social media world, right? So if you want more training like this and you want to be around a community of people who are entrepreneurs that are learning about marketing on social media, join us at the Meta Boost US group on Facebook. I'm in there. Tons of other marketers are in there. Tons of other business uh, owners like you are in there. And on top of that, we also have a ton of resources just like this session at facebook.com forward slash blueprint. So with that, thank you for taking a risk and for being open to trying new things and to getting in touch with new social media marketing strategies. But right now, I think we're going to turn it over to you guys for questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Darlene. If you guys have any, oh, we do have one question on the mm -hmm. chat already. Um, but just for anybody else, feel free to start putting, asking your questions. Brandy is asking, do you recommend the same content for Facebook and Instagram? Ah, that's a fantastic question. And here's my answer. Usually no, because there's different demographics, but there are exceptions to this. Here's the exception. You have to determine for your business who the audience is. If your audience is super active on Instagram, but they're also active on Facebook, it would make sense to have similar content, but you wouldn't want to have the exact same content on both places because then they won't want to follow you at both places because you have the exact same post everywhere. 
Now, here's what I mean by like yes and no. You kind of want the content to play off of each other. So let's say that on the Facebook page, we, and we gave three tips about something. Well, we might go to Instagram and do a reel and post five completely different tips on that reel. Same topic, post it at the same time, but we're sharing different dimensions of the same content. That, that's a good question. I noticed on Instagram, like sometimes you'll see like, go follow us on Facebook for this custom giveaway or go view this, let's live on Facebook only and so forth. So I think that's a yeah. great way to navigate both social platforms. Absolutely. Um, it also questions. helps. Yeah, it helps you get a lot more out than uh, you normally would with like one post, right? Because mm -hmm. take one post, for example, you're probably only going to post that post one time. <laughs> so yeah. if you didn't say it in the original post, it got left out. And we honestly want to be concise most of the time to keep people's attention. So one of the great ways to not only get people on all of our platforms, but to get them interested in us investing more time with us is to offer even more value, more dimensions of in different places. So we can say more. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I don't remember if you touched on this, but geotagging, do you think mm -hmm. that's a great way for visibility as well? Or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, we only touched on it briefly, but yes, tagging locations, tagging businesses that you partner with, tagging your products. Generally, we want to maintain the spirit of connectivity on social media. Social media networks are networks for networking. So we always want to be really interacting with the community, but then we're also tagging ourselves and putting ourselves in the spaces where we know people that are going to like us are going to be in. So if we live in Los Angeles and we're making a reel, tagging that reel Los Angeles it doesn't have to be a major focus, but it's a little, um, a little something extra we can do. And now the opposite is if you don't have a physical location and you're an online store, you may not want to tag things by location because you're for everyone. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Deb is asking, how important is it to use the audio trends on Reels? Is it a good way to be found and generate new leads or does it work more towards vanity metrics? Yeah, so that's the thing. So the thing about vanity metrics is that they're vain depending on what your marketing objective is. So for example, if you're trying to grow an Instagram account and you're just trying to like get it bigger, looking at the number of impressions versus the number of engagements is not a vanity metric because it's perfectly aligned with the goal. Um, it's also like this, audio trends on reels definitely help you get more exposure because things are trending. And so if you want more exposure, you are trying to reel people in, no pun intended, reel people in. <laughs> you want to use trending audios because it's going to help you get in front of more people. Now, here's the thing. You want to get those people in with the trending audios, but don't let trending audios be the focus of your conversion content. So when you're making reels that are meant to actually generate sales, not just bring people in to generate sales, these videos are probably for people that have already seen your content that are a little bit warmer. So for those pieces of content, audio trends are not super important because it's mostly going to be the people that are already in your account, already following you, already seeing you. And of course, people that don't follow you and don't know you are gonna see it too. But we're primarily making content for the people that are ready to convert. So in that type of content, it's not a big focus. To bring people in, definitely though. Nathan's asking, he says, we focus on breaking news and that's a focus for our brand across the board. So we make Instagram a fun, more out in the community driving. Is that a good way to get more followers or is that going to steer away from the brand and the image we're trying to present? Any ideas? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. And here's the reason why. <laughs> this is actually going to be a little bit silly, but um, I can't remember which piece of news it was, but recently I was watching Reels. And I heard about this like major news headline that I had not heard about through, if you can believe it, uh, an animated fish on reels in front of like uh, the news anchor background from SpongeBob. You know how they have that like fish from SpongeBob yeah. that does the news? <laughs> yeah, that was the fish. That was the fish. Oh. And so, yeah, people were presenting the news as this fish. And so here's what that does for us. Number one, sometimes news can get a little icky. It can, feel a little, it can be hard to talk about, right? And so this makes it a little bit more comfortable to share that news. So it's not 
like steering away from the focus. I think you have to determine what you want your brand to be because being in news is not a like a brand. It's like a niche, right? Your brand is how you move about the world of breaking news as a business. And so that means that you could be the news source that's like very serious, very kind of dry, like very, 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 very like this way. Or you could be the business that's a little bit more casual, that presents thing in a, things in a very stoic, neutral, casual, friendly tone. Or you could be like the fish people. They're doing amazing. Uh, I wish I knew their username because I just saw it and I was like, wow. They're sharing breaking news using an old meme that we remember from like a cartoon from the late 90s, right? Like yeah. that's so... Uh, that's creative, right? And so that's what I mean by like every business has a personality. You have to plug in your own creativity and figure out how you want to be known, how you want to step in the world, how you want to move about your industry. Awesome. Yeah. And I I, I think it also would depend on the story you're trying to break. I, For which, sure. I don't know if I would do a, a fish, you know, with a very somber story. Exactly. <laughs> right. So it also realize, I guess, acknowledge what you're sharing or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. Because it's a branding question. thing, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I love Instagram. I am a regular on it. I have my own professional account on there. So um, I'm, I'm one of those who's slowly getting into the reels, uh, learning how to do those. Obviously I'm a convert now because of TikTok. So it's been made it a little easier for me to convert into the real side. So. It was so crazy because we all got converted to video from like TikTok, right? But then we mm -hmm. all live on Instagram. So we all went to Instagram um, and yeah. then I were just watching reels and all of the video content online in every platform is really leaning towards short form video. Number one, because it's an extremely effective way to communicate. Like what the heck? That's so effective. It's a yeah. quick, concise little video. Um, and then in addition to that, it's more entertaining and I think uh, we're generally just going to move toward more of, we're going to keep moving toward a type of connectivity on social media that's going to feel more and more like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I, I think that's what I love about the Reels and just that that new option because it humanizes the people behind the business, Yeah. you know, versus just the photo. So there's that human aspect, which is, you know, in the day and age after going through COVID, I felt like that was kind of lost. And that kind of brings that back into the business world a yes. little bit. So um, just that's just my own personal thoughts on that. I love Instagram. Like I said, I, I'm a frequent shopper on Instagram. Now that they have that shopping option where they can li link uh, their products and you can go directly purchase them. <laughs> um, oh, I think darling, there you go. I was like, you're frozen a little bit. Yeah, that's so weird. I think uh, it's gonna rain and like thunder's happening. Uh, cause the light got really dark and then all of a sudden the internet. <laughs> yeah, it happens out here too. But with that being said, oh, I do have one question that came in to the Q and A box. So how long do you have to do this to see results? I don't know if you have any feedback. You know, I'm not sure which um, like strategy they're referring to, but I actually get that question a lot. And it's usually just a general question. And here's the thing about that. Everybody wants to ask that question. No one can give you an answer. And if somebody tells you that they gave you an answer, like, honestly, they're kind of winging it because um, here's the thing. You can't predict consumer behavior to a 100% accuracy. So you cannot predict how long something will take. You can actually only really predict like phases, right? So you can predict like, okay, how long will it take me to get from nothing on my profile to having like a few series and robust content on my profile? Okay, how long will it take me to go from getting zero views to getting maybe a thousand to 5,000 views? Here's how you're gonna find your answer because no one can really tell you it's gonna change every day. The uh, speed, if you will, at which you grow or nurture an audience from cold to hot and ready to buy is directly proportionate to one, how much frequency is going into it. So whether you're posting three times a week or three times a day, and two, how frequently you're pivoting. Marketing functions like a very scientific way. So if you're trying something and it hasn't worked and you try it two more times, and it still doesn't work, it might be time to pivot and it's time to change just one little thing about it. So instead of thinking about like, how long is it gonna take? Think about it this way. How many evolutions will my content go through before I find what feels like me and my business? 
and focus on that. Because if you put a time on it, like think about it this way. Uh, two years ago, this time I had less than 200 followers on any platform in general. And I was just freelancing, like I hadn't started my business in full yet. And I, had, I, was, I would ask myself, how long is it going to take until I have a full client pipeline and I never have to worry about this again? And what I realized is that it's phases. If I had get, been given a number of phases in the beginning, then I would have been able to measure time by phase and said, okay, I feel like I've moved to phase two and phase three. Instead of measuring it by time, because here's the thing, time is just a container. Anything can happen within that time. So measure in phases. Phase one, just getting established on the platform. Phase two, getting some eyeballs into the account. Phase three, engaging those people. Phase four, selling them. I love that. And yeah, I'm thinking of it this way. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it and a great way to bring this uh, awesome conversation to a close. Thank you so much, Darlene, for the very informative feedback and information that you share with us. I was taking notes and I was watching. So I was like, I was learning things that I can share with others as well. So thank you so much to our partners at Meta for sponsoring this great uh, webinar. And those, everybody who joined us, just as a reminder, it is recorded. So it will be posted on our Facebook and well, it's instantly already on Facebook, but it will also be on our YouTube channel. So you can always go there to watch it. Thank you again for joining us. And if you have any okay. questions, always feel free to reach out to me um and follow all of our socials for updates on new webinars like this that we'll be hosting um coming in december as well as coming into 2023 so again thank you so much darlene i appreciate your time and everybody thank you for coming on board absolutely thank you all thank you for being here